Hey guys, it's Marissa, kitchentablestamper.com. This is what we're making today. I'm getting ready for my first couple of craft shows of the season. And then on October 5th, I'll be at Schomburg High School. So if you live in the Chicago area, you wanna come out and meet me, I'd love to see you. This is what we're making. I'm making them for the craft fairs. Let me show you what we've got here. I've got these um, magic stretchy gloves and I've layered one inside the other. So we've got a pair of these magic stretchies and a packet of microwave popcorn. And of course we have the home style pop secret because that's my favorite. All right, so let me talk to you about the Stampin' Up! supplies that you need to make these. I picked up my gloves at Walmart um my pop secret from Meyer. that's all you need you can maybe recognize my big wide ribbon from the clearance rack there was just a clearance rack refresh so if you haven't seen that buzz over to marissa alvarez.stampinup.net and check out the clearance rack the supplies that you need to make the pumpkin dude are i've got my popping by with a halloween high printable sheet I'm going to have this on the blog for you very soon. You can go off and print it for yourself if you want to make these. Um, there's 12 2-inch tags on each sheet. So that's the first start. The printable PDF will be there for you for the tags and a project sheet with the measurements for each of these guys soon. But probably not until after the weekend. My first show's Saturday. Um, then let's see here. Let's talk about the punches that we need for this guy. I've got my hot air balloon punch. We're gonna use the little pennant for the nose. I've got my starburst punch, two inch circle. Those are for the tag. Uh, let's talk about his face. His mouth is one and three quarter inch circle. That's retired, it was just on the clearance rack. But if you wanted to, you can grab your layering circles for that one and three quarter inch circle. Okay, then um, what else do I have for him? I have some circles for his eyes. We have a, let's see here, three, a one inch circle and then a half inch circle for his eyes. And what else do I have? I have my two every season bundle. So I love this little bundle. As soon as I saw it with its tiny little punch pack, I knew that this would be one that I have to have for craft fair crafting. For Halloween, it's got the bats and the tiny little bat punch. You can punch that dude out and I use them to embellish the tag. And then for fall, there's the little leaves and there's a leaf punch. I left them on the other table, though, the other punches. For winter, snowflakes, and there's a snowflake punch. And then for Valentine's heart and a heart punch. These are the three that have punches in the little every season punch pack. Love this. Um, I will be using this many, many times. The greetings are awesome. And these little punched bits make awesome embellishments, especially if you craft fair craft or make lots of treats for classrooms or whatever. So those are our Stampin' Up! tools. I've got my Memento Tuxedo Black. And then a couple of things that are not Stampin' Up! We talked about the gloves and popcorn. And then I've got elastic, some silver elastic cord here. Um, I've got my 3 16 inch circle punch for the tag. Um, what stamp set is the greeting from? It is not from a stamp set. I made it. It was very specific. It needs to say popping by with a Halloween high. Stampin' Up! doesn't make one of those. So I designed it myself and we'll provide a printable sheet for you. It's formatted so that you can cut it out with a two inch circle punch and you'll get 12 from a sheet. All right, so there's my two inch circle with the popping by with a Halloween high. And then I've got some gorgeous grape. We're gonna do a starburst. Now this is going to be the best project for using up scraps. Grab your little envelope of scraps and your circle punches and let's give this guy some life we need two let me make sure i used one inch circles i think that is correct yep two one inch circles for the whites of his eyes and then we need one 
one inch circle for his eyelids. And then we need, let's see here. I think I got half inch circles for his eyes. Let's punch one and make sure. Can you tell I didn't write the project sheet yet? But I will. You guys will have that advantage of just, yeah, half inch circles for his pupils, for his eyeballs. Uh oh, that one got away. Two of those. And then lastly, we've got, I need a big enough scrap here because we need a one and three quarter inch circle, but we're not, we don't need the whole thing for his mouth. We're just going to cut a little more than half and that's his mouth. Do you see it? Looks kind of like, looks kind of like Cookie Monster. All right. So there's our, our pieces. Now let's get some of these dudes adhered together. I don't like having all these pieces laying around. This is how I lose something. So we're going to go ahead and adhere the eyeballs to the whites of the eyes. And I like to do a blow of center. I think it gives them some character. It's really funny how as you kind of rearrange the pieces of their faces, especially the ghost, their expressions just shift. They change. <laughs> I had an angry ghost going on for a little while. It was hysterical. To finish the eyes, we're going to take this one inch circle and cut it in half. And then a little multi-purpose liquid glue. And we're going to give him eyelids. I like that it makes him look kind of, I don't know, maybe a little, a little tired. This pumpkin's, this pumpkin's been up too late on Halloween. And then this dude. I almost forgot his nose. We're gonna grab that scrap of basic black again and punch a nose. We're gonna use a little pennant from the hot air balloon there. <laughs> now for his mouth, I did a super simple kind of freehand deal. You're just gonna mm -hmm. swoop down, kind of at a smile, and then cut out two teeth. You're gonna have to do this one freehand. I have faith in you. And then another one. Each one's going to have his own individuality, and that's okay. Do you see? I just take a deep breath and own it. I promise you. It'll be fine. And then once you've got two teeth, you want to complete that smile with a curve. See? Pretty simple, huh? <laughs> hey, Deline, how are you? Sleepy pumpkin, right? He was out too late on Halloween. All right, then we're going to just cut a, another little tooth out of the bottom. Super simple. That um, one and three quarter inch circle, punching a more than half, maybe about five eighths of the circle, gives you a really good foundational shape for the mouth. And then you just make it its own. Each one's gonna look a little different and that's okay. <laughs> Carol says, easy for you to say. Oh, come on now, I have faith in you. All right, let's get some dry adhesive here really quick, and we're going to put Pop in by with a Halloween high. Fast fuse. Now we can center that. See, much better. And oops, cut a little hole for the elastic. So now we've made our tag. Look at all of our parts are coming together. Now for our pumpkin wrap, I've got my popcorn. I'm using Pop Secret. And I have half a sheet of pumpkin pie cardstock. So this is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and you're gonna get two out of a sheet. So I'm gonna layer it, lay it over my popcorn, turn it over, see it's about centered, and then just crease up so it wraps. I don't really wanna fold. I'm actually just kind of rolling it around. We're gonna keep it kind of rounded. So just burnish that. And then we can put it together with a strong tape. Can't find my tear and tape. I didn't throw it in the cart. I've got a little red line tape here. It'll work just fine. So I'm gonna put my strong adhesive. I could probably could have used my fast views too. Tear and tape, what you got. And I like to just tape this like a little sleeve so the popcorn will slide out. I've learned over the course of doing craft fairs that people love it so much. They love the little faces and stuff. 
they want the treat to slide out or come out so that they can keep the wrappers. It's really crazy. So just uh, bring it together in the back, seam it, and then the popcorn will slide out and they can keep the little pumpkin face. A lot of people at, in the craft fairs do want to keep them. All right, then we're gonna get our gloves. I've put one inside the other, so we have a pair here. They're getting a pair of Magic Stretchy gloves and a popcorn with this treat. Isn't he just funny? All right, now we're going to stretch these gloves and pull them over about a quarter of the way on your popcorn. And we're gonna tie it all together with some ribbon. Any wide fun one will do here. Check that clearance rack. I need some ribbon scissors, cut this down. They go together so quick too. There's my cute little hat. Now I've got some elastic here. You could use some uh, the white baker's twine too, but I like the little bit of stretch and the tiny bit of sparkle. I use this for tags often. I'm gonna fold it in half and loop from the back to the front and then pull the tails through. So now it'll dangle, I can tie it on. Diane says she loves the gloves. They are um, from Walmart. These are last year's version. I um, saw some Halloween stretchies at Meyer this year, so check your discount stores for them. And I meant to go check my Dollar Tree. I was in there this morning. If I'm not home, I'm at the Dollar Tree people. But I meant to check this morning at the Dollar Tree to see if they had the magic stretchies. And especially if they had Halloween magic stretchies. I love them. All right, so I just tied my tag to my bow. Brought the elastic underneath the ribbon. Tied it on with a thread knot. And now I'm going to cut off the excess. Eh, that's a little too much excess still. There we go. Pam says, too cute. I know. He just is, isn't he? Now he needs a face. Let's give him a face. All of my bits are over here. Each one's going to have its own little personality, and that's, that's great. I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue, especially on his mouth, because we're going to get all those little edges glued down. There it is. I like to use a little bit um, all over. Carol's going to try making these for grandkids. Oh, they'll love it. They will absolutely love it. And it's such a useful little gift. It's starting to, you know, get cold by Halloween. And the gloves come in really handy. Popcorn's fun. Something different from all the sweet treats. All right, so I've got my eyeballs and I'm going to put them on, give them a little expression. I like my eyeballs to touch. I like my eyelids to slant a little bit. Do what you like. A little multi-purpose liquid glue on the nose. Stick that guy on. Now here for his mouth, we're going to, let's see. I think I want it that way. We're going to make sure that we get this little area here in between those two teeth so it doesn't catch on anything. Spread around a little bit on the back. I got a little glue sticking out from underneath my nose there. There it is. Burnish it down. One more little step. Let's get these little bats and embellish our tag. I've got a scrap of basic gray here. I'm going to stamp two little bats with Memento Tuxedo Black onto some basic gray scrap and then punch them out. I love punching out. Isn't he cute? Look how teeny weeny he is. Oh yes, there will be bats on lots of Halloween things. And I'm going to do like I do with butterflies. I'm holding his body with one hand, lifting his wings, and then put a little multi-purpose liquid glue on the body. I'm going to put one right up kind of along the tag, the little hole in the tag there, and then one off the side. Fun, fun, fun. All right, there's our popping by with a Halloween high pumpkin. For the ghost, 
Let me switch here. I'm going to slide this guy to the side. Okay, that goes to a lot of the same things. My gloves and popcorn, a half sheet of Whisper White, five and a half by eight and a half. And then for ghost, where did I put ghost? Here's the ghost. We'll need a one inch circle punch, a three quarter inch circle punch, a half inch circle punch. Then I've got a apple builder punch. Do you see this? We're repurposing the stem for the pumpkin or for the apple as eyebrows. That just makes me so happy. My mouth is from layering ovals. And it's the bittiest little layering oval. The fun part about that is when I do the hand sanitizers, if you haven't seen that, go check out that video. When I do the little hand sanitizers, I use that oval to cut the opening for the hand sanitizer, and then I save all the little ovals. So I've already got one of those cut from the smallest little layering oval. What else have I got? Some pear pizzazz for my tag this time. My two inch circle punch. This time I checked, it's not two and a quarter. Two inch circle punch. Oh, we're punching, let's just keep going. I've got Starburst from Pear Pizzazz. All right, so for his eyeballs, we're gonna punch a one inch circle. And I'm just gonna kind of get right in here and use some of this scrap. So after you print your tags off, then go through and use what's left for your eyeballs. So we got one one inch eyeball. We got one three quarter inch eyeball. Okay, so see that? More tips for you. Yeah, stick with me, kid. And we need half inch for the little pupils. So we'll do two of those. And two little eyebrows, and we're not gonna make them angry eyebrows. Here's our basic black scrap. One eyebrow. Now for the other eyebrow, you're gonna have to punch and then flip it over. So you have a so you have a pair of eyebrows, see? Let's go ahead and wrap our popcorn. I've got my little pop secret here. Eight and a half by five and a half, half sheet of cardstock, flip, fold, and I just kind of burnish here. I'm not actually making a crease. It'll make it easier to pull the popcorn out and keep the ghost together. Strong adhesive. Oh, look, there's my tear and tape. Tear and tape up the back. Strong adhesive, some tear and tape there. Bring it together. It'll just cover the tear and tape. Burnish. Flip. Gloves. Bring them up over the top about a quarter of the way over the popcorn. And then we need some ribbon. Nice wide ribbon, something kind of decorative. I pulled mine off of the clearance rack, I don't know, probably last year even. This is the striped ribbon, maybe you have some from the holiday catalog. Last one? No, the one before last. I think it is. Or from the recent, like last year, clearance rack updates. All right, we're going to go ahead and tie up a pretty decorative bow. Got to get these done. I'm going out tonight with my team. And we're going to, local ladies, we're going to do some uh, holiday tags. or like a shoebox swap. Starting to um, try to do a few more activities with the local ladies and get back into team meetings, both online and local. If you've ever thought about giving Stampin' Up! a try, I'd love for you to check out Kitchenettes, my Stampin' Up! team. All right. There's my big bow, trim off the excess, maybe give a little shape. This one's a wired one. It was a bold ribbon from Stampin' Up. All right. Pretty fun, huh? All right, we gotta put some pieces together here. Too much, too much going on. 
All right, there's popping by with a Halloween high. I'm gonna add a little more adhesive here because I was too busy gluing it to the stamp case. <laughs> We're gonna glue our sentiment centered in our starburst. Pop a hole in there. This is a 3 16 inch hole punch. You can use a crocodile too. I like to put on my tags with elastic cord, some silver elastic cord. You could use white baker's twine for this if you need something current. I looped it through the back. Now we've got a hanging tag. Let's take one of these. We're going to slide it right underneath the ribbon. And then tie it on with a thread knot nice and tight like close to that big bow let's get his face on should we so we've got I don't know if you guys notice because it's white on white but I've got one big eyeball and one little eyeball that's just me it expresses my personality hopefully it'll resonate with somebody you can absolutely do them both the same size if that's your bag all right going to adhere the little pupils into the white of the eye with some multi-purpose liquid glue and I like to do them low so that they're not right in the center. It's all about their expressions. I like to give them very expressive faces. And then we're going to glue the eyeballs to the face. What do you guys think of the one big eyeball, one little eyeball? Is it crazy? Kind of kooky? I'm going to make them touch. Kathy thinks it's adorable. Thank you, Kathy. All right, then multi-purpose liquid glue on that smallest oval from the layering ovals. Eyebrows. See, look. See what I mean about angry eyebrows? Wait till you see. <laughs> see the difference? Isn't that hysterical? All right. Switch. We're going to... We're gonna rotate these eyebrows, make him look like he's having fun. Diane loves the eyes, oh good. I wasn't sure at first. In the Boo To You online classroom, we have a coffin box and in the coffin box is a mummy. And the mummy has one eye that's bigger than the other. And it's quirky and it's me. <laughs> Who said angry bird? Irene said angry bird, yep. Absolutely angry bird. All right, so there's our little dude in the space. Now we're back to punching, stamping and punching bats. Let's get it done. We're almost there. Because craft fairs are a part of my life to stay, so this will be a good go-to, I think, for the long haul. I stamped my two little bats with memento, and I'm going to punch them out. It's on. Um, some, this one's uh, basic gray. Deborah says, do I pop the eyes for more dimension? Sometimes I do mess around with the dimension on them. Um, this time, I am going for quick and easy and inexpensive to see how they sell. But I will definitely be playing with, with some dimension at some point, too. I also put them flat because I don't plan on bagging them. And when they're flat, they'll, they'll stack and displays a little bit better. If they're bumped, people shuffling through them can... Um, get them caught on each other. So that's that was my other thought, is I'm not gonna bag this again for the craft fairs. And um, I want them to stay as nice as possible through the Halloween season here. We've only got about, what, six weeks before Halloween, maybe five. So I think that they'll be fine without a second bag, especially without that extra dimension on there. So those are my thoughts, but the eyes would be really cool popped up for sure. I'm adding a little multi-purpose liquid glue to my bats again. I'm just embellishing the tag. The tag is a PDF. I designed it. Um, I'm not an amazing typographer, but I think it works. I would rather Stampin' Up! design me a popping by with a Halloween high stamp. <laughs> but this totally works. And then I got to embellish it with two every season. All right, so there's our ghosts. You guys want to see the pumpkin again? I don't know if anybody's joining us late. Let me grab our little pumpkin dude. Okay. 
get him back in the picture and our pumpkins. If you've got any questions about the project or Chicago area, like what shows I'm going to be at, Chicago area stamping classes, you can take classes online with me, buzz over to kitchentablestamper.com or email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. I'm happy to help you out in any way that I need to to help you stay crafty. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys will give this a try. They're so easy. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next week.